So as I say, welcome along to um, this webinar this afternoon. Many thanks for joining us. Um, my name is Tom McEntee from Eureka Solutions, account manager here, looking after our implicit side of the business. And we will be looking at um, implicit in more detail this afternoon as we look at moving to a modern finance system, perhaps from an on-premise solution or some of the starter solutions that are out there. So we'll look to introduce Eureka Solutions in a bit more detail who we are. We'll then look at a bit of iPlicit, the background of the of the product, and then we'll look at main reasons that people may look to move to a modern cloud-based solution like iPlicit and some of the, the key advantages and benefits that you'll have of doing that. Before then going into a short demonstration where I'll show you some of the key features of iPlicit and kind of bring those to life that we talk about in the short presentation. And um, if there are any questions as we go along, please use the chat facility that uh, that Zoom provides, and we'll get to those at the end. I think um, Nathan from Erika is on to uh, my colleague is on this afternoon looking at the questions. And we can, if you've got any at all, we'll make sure those are answered at the end of today's session. All righty. So, as I say, we'll make a wee start and we'll work a wee bit about Eureka Solutions and who, and who we are and where we came from. So Eureka Solutions have been successfully implementing cloud solutions for over 15 years, and we're founded on two key core principles, and that's technical expertise and customer service, and it all, always has been and always will be at the forefront of everything we do here at Eureka. We provide the implementation, and support services um, for the likes of iPlicit, which we'll look at today. So we would do the implementation, taking you from whatever system you're on, doing the scoping, making sure it's the right fit for, for your needs, doing the training of the system, the data migration, bringing it all into iPlicit. And then we're doing the ongoing support um, for the system as well. So that comes back to our customer service and technical expertise. It actually brings those two core principles right to the fore from selling the solution in terms of making sure it fits your requirements, providing that implementation and technical expertise through um, taking your data and doing the training, like we said, and that support service as well, which brings the customer service right to the fore. We also have our own integration application called Besynchly, which can sit between um, iPlicit, some other ERP solutions, and third-party applications, for example, e-commerce platforms like Shopify, Magento. So we also provide our own development for, um, for integration as well. And we'll touch on that as we go through uh, today's session. The team's grown massively um, over the years. We had three staff back in 2004 to over 70 today. And as we say, the Going back to those, those core principles, the majority are actually in technical roles, or at least start in technical roles as well. So, for example, my background here at Eureka, I worked on the support team, helped out with implementations before coming across to do more sales, account management, and doing things like this today, um, introducing webinars for, for some of our different solutions. So everyone's got that technical ground and develop, to be able to deliver on those two uh, core um, founding principles, customer service and, and technical expertise. And really looking at that customer service area, uh, focusing on that, 9.7 out of 10 customer satisfaction on customer share. So what does that mean? Uh, it means that every time that we close a support case, we, we touched on the support services that pro we provide for, for the likes of Iplicit and Besynchly, any time that a support case is closed, um, customers will be sent an anonymous kind of feedback form to say how they were treated, how the, the problem was dealt with. And we're sitting at 9.7 out of 10, which is a really good rating and, and something we always strive to even improve on as we go forward. So that's just a, a little bit of background on Eureka Solutions and, and, and our background. We're a proud partner for iPlicit. So we have we partnered with iPlicit to, to implement um, their software um, and sell their software. So what is iPlicit and where does it sit within, within the market? So it's cutting edge true cloud accounting software. And we'll see that when we go into um, the demonstration later on, how it's fully in the cloud. And that's a big, big um, advantage that you'll have from other kind of maybe um, smaller on-premise solutions. It's built off the back of 30 years of, of industry experience. So it's actually built from the team that, that brought you Exchequer. So some people in the call may remember Exchequer. Um, it's the same team that's built that, but wanted to build a solution that was always in the cloud. So it's been fully built in the cloud. 
and it's designed specifically for businesses and, and finance professionals that are that are maybe limited um, by on-premise solutions or maybe their starter cloud uh, starter cloud solutions. So there are some cloud solutions out there that maybe just lack maybe the depth um, that they need to grow. And that's where iPlicit comes in and really nicely. So what does it actually give you with iPlicit? Where does it sit? So it gives you that enterprise level functionality, but it is designed for, for quicker adoption um, and an, a quicker implementation process, probably compared to your uh, more enterprise level systems um, that might require a, a long, long implementation, a lot of scoping, a lot of setup. iPlicit's designed to give you that functionality but not have to go through that, that big implementation. So on average, it's around about kind of 16 to 20 days that it takes to put on iPlicit, which is a lot less than maybe some of those bigger enterprise level systems where you'd be looking at a lot larger implementation. There's over 700 organizations using the software daily now, and that's ever growing. Um, the, the solution's grown massively over the last couple of years. And there's over 19,000 daily users of the software. Now, that's probably even bigger when we're speaking today, probably over that 20,000 mark. So lots of people using the software day in, day out. Can't just take my word for it, of course. The, the, the software has won plenty of awards on, and has been part of plenty of awards over the over its kind of short tenure. And um, you can see some of those on the screen, and you can actually see some that are really, really recent as well. So, for example, Tech Southwest Awards in 2023, which is really, really recent and won that award. And also ISO um, accredited as well, as you can see on the screen there. So it's gained, it's gained some real recognition um, over a short space of time. So what is, again, just to, to introduce iPlicit a bit more, and of course we'll come on to a kind of short demonstration of iPlicit, but just to give you a feel for some of the things that iPlicit can do. It's an all-encompassing piece of software. It can run across financials. You can manage some stock in there, projects. You can see some of the, the things on the screen just now. Bank recs, funds, great for charities. If we've got any charities on this afternoon, which I think we have, we can integrate with um, fundraising membership actually integrate with any third party system. Again, that could be with the help of Resyncly. Um, so there's lots and lots that the system can help with and it can go across a lot of areas and you can really make it your own depending on what you need. Again, that comes back to our um, implementation services that we can try and mold, uh, mold the system to best fit your needs. I suppose the best thing to know and what we're trying to get across is that there's lots and lots of this can do for you. So now we've looked at a wee bit of iPlicit, and again, we'll come back to, to look at the software in a bit more, more depth. But going back to the kind of premise of uh, this afternoon's webinar, why would I actually look to move to a cloud system from maybe like an on-premise legacy system or a starter, um, a starter solution? So the first thing would be the lack of visibility of business information. So there's a few challenges that come up when, when we speak about this. So, for example, accessing an on-premise solution remotely. Of course, that's became more and more prevalent over the last few years, especially during during COVID, where a lot of us had to, to adapt to working from home. And I'm sure some on the call maybe struggled with getting access to their on-premise solutions via VPNs or via remote desktop connections. Um, so times had to kind of move on with that. So moving to a, a cloud solution will certainly help. And then, as well as that, not having real access, uh, real time access to information. So again, it actually comes back to looking at maybe COVID and, and looking at working from home. You want to have real time information. You don't want to look at a report that's maybe been run when you were last in the office. You want to run a report and that gives you some real time information. And, and not having that can lead to decisions being made off of kind of false information, not being made quickly enough. So that just comes up to that next point, time wasted collating data via, via static reports. So for example, you're on a report, as soon as it's run, it's, it's out of date. And that can then lead to an inability to make informed business decisions. So how can iPlicit and moving to a, a full cloud solution help with that? So an iPlicit that is configurable, configurable self-service reporting and dashboards. So we can see that via inquiries, we can look at actual dashboards. We can also even run reports if we wanted to as well. So there's loads of different ways to get data out of the system in a real time environment. There's a, an app for iPlicit, so you can actually access the data anytime, anywhere. So if you're on a train or going down to see a client or you just might be out of the office for a unexpectedly, you can always get access to the data via, via a mobile app or on the tablet. 
and the, and the best thing for me, one that I personally really love, is the is the reports. Uh, fully drillable, so when we uh, drill into an inquiry, we can actually go straight into the numbers that are making up uh, the report that's on the screen. So different to those static reports that might come from, from an on-premise solution. Costly version upgrades is a big um, probably downside of being on being on a, an on-prem solution. Um, so what are the challenges of this? I'm sure many of you on the call today have had to, to upgrade your system um, now and again, and it can lead to different to different challenges. For example, being locked on to a certain version because you maybe don't have the time, you don't have the resource, you don't have the, the capabilities to go to that next version. And there might be something in that next version that you really need and then you find yourself locked on a certain version of the software. It could mean support finishes for your current version. And again, you might not have the capabilities to move to the next one and you find yourself on an unsupported version of your software, which leads to lots of risks in terms of what may happen to the data, what may happen to day-to-day -day processing. And upgrades are, can be costly um, in terms of re-implementing, in terms of testing, not just on a financial side, but also on a time side as well. Of course, you would need to do some user acceptance testing for, for any new version of the software. So it comes up a lot of challenges having to upgrade from time to time. Now, you don't need to upgrade all the time, but you certainly probably would in um, every kind of two to three years, at least I would suggest. So how can iPlicit help with that? So the great thing about iPlicit is you're always on the latest version of the software. So you're always privy to the latest release in terms of how the guys at iPlus are adding to the software. In our regular product updates, it's probably month to month, there's things being added, and that's all based off of customer feedback in terms of what should be added next to the software. So you can rest assured that you're always going to be on the latest version of the software. It's really a really, really good thing to know because it means you always are going to have the latest, the latest um, features. It means that you don't have to constantly think about when am I upgrading next. It just means that you can grow the business, you can grow um, iPlus as the business grows. So you can always add additional modules, integrations via Vsyncly and the Open API. And that final one, automatic seamless upgrades. So you probably won't even know the, um, the software has been upgraded. It just happens kind of overnight for you. So you don't need to worry about scheduling it in, booking time for your staff to put the test in. You don't need to kind of worry about all of that side of things because it's all being done automatically for you. And um, because you're in the cloud, this is just all automatic and you can rest assured that you're always on the latest version of the software. And finally, I rely on kind of manual processes. So what are the challenges kind of associated with that? Well, both just wasting time um, or just not using time efficiently um, on kind of manual tasks that may be in approvals, it may be um, in interrogating reports, it could be in a variety of different ways. Um, plus it has lots of um, lots of ways that it can improve um, and automate certain you know, certain features, which we'll look at in a second. Processes then become open to human error. Um, we know that if we're doing lots and lots, everyone's getting busier, and um, we're doing lots and lots in a day, you, you are prone, no matter how switched on we are, um, we're always prone to making a mistake. We're only human after all. So the more that the system can help us, the better. And it just means that we, we might not make those errors that just come from time to time. And inefficient approval processes speak to a lot of customers who, who struggle with maybe getting things approved. It's done by email. It's so maybe done by uh, putting paper on people's desks. I've heard that one fairly recently. So that's, these are all challenges that can can make a business a bit more inefficient or certainly make processes a lot more inefficient. So how can I plus it help in that regard then? Um, account automation tools. So for example, month end and year end from, from my experience and, and speaking to lots and lots of customers, it is most frantic time um, of the month, and especially the year um, for finance professionals when we're doing our month and year end. So I plus it has built in some out the box automations to try and help with that and make things a less less tedious and just get things done done quicker. It's always a busy time of the month and a busy time of the year. So the more that we can automate, the more time that frees up for you to be doing something that's that's, that's more effective with your time. There's easy imports and exports to Excel. Now, as finance professionals, Excel is always going to be there. Um, Excel is probably the most widely used application for, um, for finance professionals. So I plus it actually looks to link with Excel in several different ways and make them work together. 
Um, we, of course, we can do a lot more interrogation from within the system itself to try and limit how much you use Excel. But there's maybe always going to be a time where we need to maybe import from an Excel file or maybe want to see something in an Excel file because we're used to that. And we also have a, a full link into Excel as well, which I can show you as we go. And there's inbuilt and customizable workflows as well. So when we talk about workflows, I've mentioned one before about maybe the purchase um, side of a business, maybe requisitions being approved by certain people or certain groups of people, it may be budgets that need to be approved. So there's lots of inbuilt workflows that we can that we can play with and also customizable. And again, that comes back to our implementation team who would certainly help you with the, the, the workflows that you want to build for the different areas areas of the business that the workflows are needed. So certainly lots of areas that can help with these kind of manual processes, things that may be manual at the moment and can maybe be made more efficient as we go with, with I plus it. All righty, so very quick demonstration. I want to, to spend too long um, on sliding things. So without further ado, what we'll do is we can jump into I plus it. So we'll just move across to here. So you should be able to see I plus it on your screen. So we, first thing to probably note is we are in Google Chrome at the moment. It could be any browser that you, that you would wish. So I don't need to send you across any system requirements or anything in terms of a server. You can just run this from the internet. As long as you've got an internet connection, you will be able to, to log in to iPlicit. So you can see here, I've just went to iPlicit.com and I'm just going to quickly log in. So everything's password protected, so I'll pop in the password. And also I've got this verification code set up. So we can set up two-factor authentication against iPlicit to make it as secure as possible. So I'm just going to pop in the code that I've got on the phone here. And hopefully we get this right first time. And there we go. And that will log us into iPlicit. So this is us now into the program iPlicit. And we'll just move this away slightly just so we can play about with things in the screen. And what it's going to actually load through is one of the iPlicit dashboards. So it's just looking at the data from within within iPlicit and it's going to present it in a nice dashboard based format for us. Um, so this is just one of the dashboards, as we say down when we were going through the slides. There's loads of ways to interrogate data from within iPlicit. So one way being dashboards. Now, this is something that's certainly very different to some on-premise solutions. Um, some of the starter solutions will probably incorporate that dashboards. But this is just one of the, one of many dashboards. Now, you can set in whatever homepage you would like. I've got the age debt um, dashboard open in front of me just now, but you can actually set that to be whatever you want it to be. So if you were someone that's doing a lot of purchases or maybe someone that's looking at profit and loss or maybe looking at need creditors, for example, you could choose any dashboard, any screen, any inquiry that you want to look at when you first load an iPlicit. And this just gives us a first look at the look and feel of iPlicit and how to get around. And we'll start to go, uh, we'll start to go around in a bit more detail in a little second. So this is one of our dashboards. We can look at um, age debt, but as I say, this could be age creditors. And um, if I just come in and look at some of the dashboard, we will just go to our analytics. You can see here, we've actually got quite a lot of dashboards that we can run. So we've got age cred creditor, we've got some for client revenue, some for credit control. So you can see here by the blue icon that these are author based. So this is ones that I plus it that are built for um, to be used by, by customers. But you can see here, there's also some that have been created, some copies to play about with. So you can actually amend these dashboards and start to make them their own as well. I plus I've tried to make the system as self-service as possible so that we can so that we can actually make the system our own. So we've just popped into the inquiries but we're waiting that can come through, we'll go through some of the things we can do here in iPlicit. So if I just pop into my login screen, I can see here I can change the security settings in terms of passwords and different things. I can set up two-factor two authentication, which we've already done when we logged into the system. Also do some nice things with changing the colour, so we can make it our own, we can black out the screen if we wanted to, not my personal favourite. Um, we could make it um, purple, we can change the colour and try to make it our own a little bit. You can see here from the, the help icon as well, so this is really good. To, of course, we spoke, spoke right back at the start of today's webinar that we would do the support for the system and we'll always be there for any kind of day-to-day -day questions that come up. I don't know how to do a certain thing or, or need, to, need to do this, what's the next step? Of course, our support team will be on hand to help. But there is a, a really good, nice um, 
and get nice and uh, help files. So we've got some that are under development at the moment, but you can see as met, there's lots and lots of help that we can easily get from my listen. From this, this screen as well, we can also look at the releases that I was talking about before. Now, what I'd say about when we were looking at upgrades and, and how frequently the, the software gets updated, I think it's quite clear to see from here, it gets updated fairly regularly. So we had things in March, May, August and November of last year constantly being updated with, with different things. And first new release of this year already came into play with February 2024. And you can see there it's just enhancing the functionality that's already in there. Now, as I said before, you're always going to be on the latest version of the software, so you don't need to worry about upgrading to get the latest um to get the latest so um, the latest features that are, that have been released in the software. Alrighty, so if we start to look at different areas of implicit, and we can start to bring in some of those things that we spoke about on the presentation. So when we start in in the general ledger or nominal ledger, and we'll have a wee look at our profit and loss. And this should actually bring to the fore some 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 of the things that we'd mentioned in our in our presentation, particularly around drilling into the ports and how we can get reports out of the system. So if I were to just run this profit and loss, we can see that it's not our traditional print out, we can get that if need be. So if you did need to get a print, a kind of more printed version of a profit and loss or indeed any kind of financial statement or, or, um, or report out the system, you can certainly get that. But this is a really nice way of, of getting um, and, and getting hands on with the data. So you can see here we've got it by financial year, but we could change that. It's a multi-company system. So if you did have more than one company, we could maybe show our um, profit and loss by legal entity. We could maybe split it down by cost center. We could also maybe split it down by department. So there are just different views of the profit and loss that, we, that are come out the box for us. Come back to our financial year. If I click the control key, we can, or in fact, I don't even need to click the control key, but you can see we can get around the system we can see I could go and look at this cost center. I could go and look at this department. But I can actually drill into the figures. So if I just looked at this balance here, I can actually drill into that balance. And what it will do is, is actually bring up all the transaction that's contributing to making that balance. So I can, can go from here, and then I can actually go and drill straight into the sales invoice that's making up part of that transaction. Now, you can see at the side here that it's building up where we've been in the system. Now, this is really, really handy because in some of maybe a starter solution or maybe an on-premise solution, for me to get from a profit and loss through to a transaction that's making up the um, the figures would be a lot more long-winded. So from to get from running a profit and loss, having a look at it, trying to interrogate that, then going into our sales ledger, then going against the customer, and then going to try and find that exact invoice. From a few clicks, I've actually done that and I've listened. I can always see where I've been before though, because it's building up on this side, this left-hand side toolbar. So what I plus have tried to do is make it so you're not opening up loads and loads of tabs. So in other substance, you may need to kind of right-click, open a new tab, and what you would end up with is the dreaded tabs all across. And I think we've all been there at some stage where we are doing that many things at once that we'll get loads and loads of tabs open. Um, I can't think of anything worse, to be honest. Um, it can get really confusing and flustering. So what happens is, and I place it, it actually all gets stored in this left-hand toolbar. So as we see, we are looking at our P&L. We then drilled into, I think, this invoice here, and then that's open. So you can always go back to where you were before. It just makes things a lot easier. We can easily then close these views in the X symbol there. So it just kind of goes to show the drillability of these reports um, as opposed to actually running the report and not being able to drill in. And there'll be other areas where we can we can look to do that. We can also export to Excel. As we said, there's lots and lots of ways to get things to Excel in and out. So if I just export this to Excel, it should open here. And with Excel opening just now, so hopefully that doesn't take too long, we can see we can actually just get all the data out into Excel in that kind of same format, and we can do anything we need to do from within Excel. So as I say, we're looking to use Excel with iPlicit. Of course, of we can inter we can already interrogate in there, but there may be some occasions where we need to get the data into Excel. Um, as I say, probably the most widely used um, application for finance professionals. So certainly want to work with it as opposed to um, being totally, uh, totally separate. 
you can see at the top here we've got this iPlicit add-in. Now there's actually an add-in for iPlicit where you, for Excel where we can actually get we can we can incorporate iPlicit data into our into Excel and actually pull the data straight from Excel. So it's a it's a free add-in. It's really quick to install. We just use our add-ins feature and search for iPlicit. And what you actually you find is you, you can open iPlicit and actually pull data straight into Excel and have that live feed into Excel if that was what you wanted to do. A really handy feature to have. If I go back to iPlicit, back to our PL, if I just come out of here. Um, so again, we've got you can see this Excel button coming up all over. Um, so it could again we can run this by legal entity just to reiterate, we can run it by cost center. And other things we can do is that we can actually amend what we see in this profit and loss. So at this moment in time, we've got um, a cost center in there, but I may want to, to add a department and analyze by department code. So I can easily just add that in and it's added in our departments. If we didn't like the way it looked and we wanted to change that slightly and have it have it as columns as opposed to rows, we can do it that way as well. So it's really easy to start amending these inquiries um, and making them our own and slicing the dice in the data in ways that's going to suit you best. And on that theme, if we have a look at a chart of accounts, so if I just go to that, this left-hand toolbar again, just really easy to get around. If I want to look at a chart of accounts, I can just type anything in here. If I wanted to see customers, I could do that. If I wanted to see suppliers, I could look at this. A really easy way to get around. So if I go to a chart of accounts, there is no kind of entity in terms of how you can analyze in um, iPlicit. So we can set up lots and lots of attributes against our nominal code. So if you didn't want to analyze by cost center department, you could analyze by project. It could be by whatever means that you want to do. There is no kind of limit to how much you can analyze um, in iPlicit. Um, and that's a real advantage over some of them, some of the, the kind of starter solutions certainly that I've used in the past. Um, we are maybe restricted to a cost center department or maybe even just restricted to a department code. And then you need to rely on different ways to get slice and dice the data you want. And I plus it, you can have as many attributes as need be um, to slice the dice the data um, in a way that suits you best. All righty. So how do we look at the profit and loss? Because that's really a nice way to see that kind of drawability. Another way that we can look at that is maybe within purchasing. Um, within, and this will bring into consideration our, our workflows that we spoke about before, where we can put in requisitions. So we can see here across the top toolbar that we've got requisitions. They could then go to orders. They can then turn to an invoice, or you can just pop in invoices. Loads of ways to get these into the system. There's a new AP automation tool that iPlicit have brought in terms of getting your invoices in um, without kind of manual intervention. We can import these via CSV if we're wanting to do that. But if we just go and look at our invoice list, for example. Now we can see here again, we've got our, our view and our inquiry. Um, before we even get there, actually, we'll actually have a wee look at our suppliers before we even look at the, any invoice against our suppliers. We'll have a look at our supplier list and just to encapsulate how we can start to slice and dice data again within, within iPlus and how easy it can be. So we've got this view of our, all of our open suppliers. If we wanted to add columns, we can easily do that through the cog and make it as full or as, or as simple as you want in terms of the, um, you might just want to see the company and the code, and that's all. You might want to put a postcode, you might want to see when you last modified the supplier. It really depends on, on what you want to see. And you can easily change the grouping of these columns by just simply dragging and dropping. You can see at the top here, we've got some um, some views that we've created. So I can have a look at Pom's tech suppliers. Um, and that's just basically filtered the list and said, I want to see all of our suppliers that are technology suppliers. So they've been set in a group that's been preset in the background to be technology suppliers. Now, it's really, really easy to kind of replicate that or, or do something similar. So I just copied this. You can see I've got another one now. I maybe want to see Tom's freelance suppliers, for example. So if I just pop this in here and say, Freelance, and I'll just change the supplier group just for ease. And if we can find freelancers, pop off technology, pop in freelancers, there we go. And then we can apply that. And then we can look at our freelance suppliers. So really easy ways to filter the list. Now we've done that with suppliers. Could be with customers, could be with nominal codes, could be with whatever you need. It could be with products. 
So it's just really, really easy ways to, to slice and dice your data. Again, without having to run any reports, all do that within here. And then from there, you can easily look at, at the supplier and, and what's going on with the supplier. If I go into our purchase invoices, again, some of our suppliers then, it gives, I'll have a look at this invoice that's came from AA products. I'll have a wee look at this. Now, with a, with a purchase invoice, we can always see anything that's linked to it. So we can see this is either like to a, this is a purchase order that it's came from. Now, again, we can go, that everything's just going to open on our left-hand side here. So we can actually see what's went on with the purchase order and the invoice simultaneously. You can see the watermark on the screen that says this is a completed purchase order. And then if I go in here, we can see that this has this has been a um, this is an invoice um, that's linked to that purchase order. So you've always got that link there. Inbuilt document management means that you can easily attach anything that you want to against this. So if I wanted to add anything in here, I'll just stick in our purchase invoice. And we should see our purchase invoice just stored against the transaction. And then we can have a look at our previewed purchase invoice. And there it is there. Of course, that's probably not a, an invoice. Well, maybe it is an invoice you would want to receive for absolutely nothing. Um, but we can easily drag and drop, drop from our desktop or from our email. It doesn't have to be a PDF. It could be an email. It could be any document that you want to attach to a transaction in I plus it. Inbuilt document document management is brilliant because it gives you that visibility of, of what you're looking at without having to without having to kind of go too far. All right. So you've always got you've always got that visibility. And that's what we mentioned about when we were going through the the presentation is having that key visibility of information or maybe the lack of visibility that you've maybe got in some of the, the kind of starter solutions. All right. We can even go from here to then see um, any allocations against this invoice. So I can actually look at the payment run that was done. I can then you can see it's been paid, you can see it's been paid again. Our watermarks have shown as that. We can then look at email and a remittance out to the supplier. So I can preview this, preview the document. It's going to come out. Just leave that to go. We can, we can easily set up emails to go out of iPlicit. So we're using um, the remittance as an example. This could be for invoices going to customers. We can easily set this up in the background and we can amend what's been said to the, to the customer or the supplier in this instance. We can have a look at the PDF of our remittance advice. Of course, our team would help in terms of making sure all your logos were on the on any outgoing documentation to make sure it looks pretty and looks the way you want that. But you can see there from a few clicks, um, I've been doing this probably, we've been around lots and lots of areas and I plus it, um, not with many clicks um, and probably around about 15, 20 minutes. And we went from looking at invoices, a p &L, and it's really, really easy to get around. And the great thing is, that age debt where we start is still there. So if we had to revert back to this, we know how a, a busy day of a, of a financial professional work, we might be looking at one thing once and then we might get sidetracked onto something else. I can always remember, oh, I was looking at my age debt dashboard. I was looking at what, how to, who I'm going to pay. For example, just to kind of provide a, um, an overview of different ways that we could maybe look at that information, we're looking at it in a, in a dashboard at the moment, but if I actually just wanted to look at it, and a inquiry screen, I can do that as well. So there's loads of different ways of looking at information. So we'll use our dashboard. We've look, we can get reports out of the system. And so we can use these inquiries. They're so, so powerful in terms of getting information out. So loads of different companies like to, to do credit control, for example, in different ways. So this is grouping it by customer. We might want to group by legal entity. We might want to do it by customer group. Oh, well, and again, we can say well, what's actually making up this four-month total, and that looks quite high. Um, and we can actually go into um, these, and we can see the invoice, and again, drill straight to where it's been. And we can see anything that's wrong with the invoice and go straight in there. Again, just highlighting how easy it is to get around the system um, all at once without having to run loads of different reports and be in different areas of the system. Just come into this my button. So what I can do is I can actually close all of these out because it might come, you've been doing that much, you want to just close. So I'll just close them all and just leave one open. So I'll just leave that invoice open. If I just come over to this tab here, my, so we can see here that 
there might be something we might be someone that authorizes we might be someone that puts in expenses we might be someone that puts in timesheets so we've got this my area where we can see our expenses we can see our timesheets we can see any authorizations that we need to look at and um, we can also do that through this flag here there'll be a flag that would come up if you were say a budget holder or say you were a manager that had to approve purchase orders or purchase invoices you'd have this notification here to tell you something has to be done something has to be authorised. But we've got this My Area that looks at authorizations, expenses, timesheets, just where we can do our own thing. And the great thing about Implicit is there's different user license types. That means that not everyone has to have a full user license. It might be just the finance team that look, that, that have to have full, uh, full access to do all the different finance activities that some that we've looked at today. I think some people that are just entering expenses into the system, maybe it's people that are all they want to do is put timesheets in, they just want to raise requisitions, they don't really care who you're buying it from, they don't really have anything to do with what GL code it's going to and, and what department it's going to, all they know is that they need something to make their job easier. So you can actually set the system up or set people up with licenses that just allow them to do that as opposed to having full access to the system. I know from speaking to, to some that they would want no one but the finance team looking at the finance system. So these licenses are really good just to allow people to um, to get access to areas that they need um, without um, without having that, that full expense of a, of, a, of a full user license. So looking at authorization, we said in the um, we said in the, in the presentation that there are lots of authorization workflows that we can set up. I just look at some of those here. We've just got some that are set up, but we can we can make more. So budget approval, great example. Purchase invoice and purchase orders, probably the most well used example in terms of authorization. But this just gives you a, a feel for how you how, what we can do in iPlicit in terms of uh, in terms of approvals. Now, in some on premise solutions and starter solutions, you may need some add on products to do this. It may be a bit more a bit less. Um, intuitive, you can set the um, workflows up to the nth degree in terms of who do they go to, how many levels of approval do they go to, um, and and it can become can, can become really really complex or as as complex as you need it to be. And the last thing is probably automations as well. I mentioned when we were doing the, the slides that there was ways that we could automate different areas of the system, um, looking at the month-end routines, things that we do at month-end and year-end. So these are just some of these, like prepayment, for example, um, penny corrections. Is that another great example where I plus it can come in and automate certain, certain areas? And even just that whole workflow that we were talking about. So, for example, going from a requisition through to a purchase order, through to an invoice, the automation centre can automate all these areas for you. And um, so there's lots and lots of areas that, that, that can be automated and loads that can, can go through workflows as well. So I'm conscious of the time and want to get to probably some questions that, that you may have. That's just been a really whistle-stop tour through some of the areas. We looked at purchases, we looked at suppliers, but the same goes on the sales side where we can have quotes to orders and dispatch goods, bring in invoices, and that same kind of rule applies across customers as well. Well, you can see here, I've been really imaginative. Um, I've had got Tom's customers, so if you had different people looking after different customers, the same kind of rules apply in terms of customers and all areas of implicit. Really easy to slice and dice data, really easy to get data out, and really easy to interrogate data as well, all with being in a full cloud solution that's 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 fully hosted in the cloud as opposed to being on premise um, and having to worry about those things like upgrades and, and and upgrading the software and logging in via VPNs and things. So I suppose the key the key message is this ease and that's that is what I plus it would give you um as well as as well as kind of full enterprise level functionality. All righty. So that was just been a really whistle, quick whistle stop to our demonstration of iPlicit. But of course, if you wanted to delve further into the detail and wanted to look more at iPlicit in terms of different areas, different business areas, for example, budgeting, something that we've not really touched upon in terms of running our budgets and forecasts and looking at budget versus actual reports, um, but budget versus year to date, lots, lots of areas that we can delve into. If we did want to, if you did want to look at it in more detail, I'd be more than happy to set up a kind of full demonstration and talk to you more about, about your requirements. Um, and I guess 
it just leads us to say if there are any kind of questions, then I'd be more than happy to kind of answer them. Uh, yeah, we've got a couple of questions here, Tom. Um, the Great. first one is, do you need to manually back up the iPlacid data? Mm, that's a really good question. Actually, I probably should have kind of mentioned that as we were going through, speaking about um, being built in the Azure platform and, and being on the cloud. You do not need to um, um, manually back up the data. So I've worked with some systems in the past where you might need to set up maybe a maintenance plan or, or something from IT to, to make sure your data is backed up. But you can rest assured uh, with Iplicit that all will be will be fully backed up in the cloud. So you don't need to worry about um, doing a manual backup or make it or, or worrying that have I backed up the data and if something happens, where's the data going to be? It's all very secure in the Azure platform and it's all in a classic kind of data center. So that's all kind of done for you. So really good question. Uh, but yeah, all, all backed up already for you. Yeah, that's great. Um, another one here that says, can we bring over historical data from our current Stage 50 system into Iplicit? Yeah, absolutely can. Um, I presume the reason you're maybe asking that question is, well, probably trying to get rid of maybe a, a Sage 50 server or maybe a server that, that Sage is sitting on. Sage is just an example, of course. Um, yeah, so I plus it when when you're doing the migration of, of the data, there's different options for you. You can certainly look at um, just bringing across open imbalances, but for many, it's really good to have that historical data. So what iPlicit have got is uh, what's called the archive data facility. So it means that you can actually bring across all your, um, in this case, Sage 50 historical data and pop it into iPlicit just so when you're doing, um, you need to kind of refer back or for audit purposes or whatever it may be, um, you want to interrogate previous uh, previous data, you can do that. So that is that is certainly an option when uh, we're doing the data migration from, from, in this instance, Sage 50, to bring the data across. And that what that means is you can actually then get, depending on what's on that server that's maybe running Sage 50, you could maybe look to decommission that and, and get rid of that kind of overhead cost. Um, so it's, it's a really good facility that's available. So um, yeah, really good question. And and yeah, that's absolutely something something that we can do with Iplicit. And we'd be more than happy to kind of discuss the options that you might have in terms of uh, migrating to Iplicit in more detail um, if you wanted to do that. Yeah, amazing. Uh, that's all the questions we've got at the minute, unless anyone so far in. Oh, one's just come there. Um, yeah, I think that's just key. Uh, what does the VAT return look like on the system? So it's everything is so just like many systems or like every system should be um, these days. It's all um, MTD compliant, so you can actually submit your VAT return through um, Iplicit. So I've not got all it all kind of set up at the moment to show on the on the webinar this afternoon. But what I can certainly do is um, so I think it's actually in there. You can see the VAT return. So it would all it's all um, linked to HMRC in terms of doing your VAT return through Iplicit. So you don't need a kind of third party piece of software or a third party kind of spreadsheet like software to, to hook on to iplicit um it would all be done through the system itself um if you do have any kind of further questions on that and you actually want to see that or as much as i can show you in practice um, in terms of doing the VAT return and, and filling that out just let me know and i'm more than happy to kind of jump on a, on a quick session um just to show you that in a bit more detail okay um another question here from there is what about integration with iplicit um what software can be integrated so any kind of software really so in terms of what we've got in terms of integrations and in, so there's different ways that we can integrate into iplicit now there's an open api for iplicit which is great makes it really open to integrations and um, of course we can use our basically platform so basically as we said at the, at the beginning or near the beginning of the presentation this afternoon um as a solution that we built here at erica solutions um that works with iplicit and has connectors for e-commerce platforms crm platforms um but there's also um scope to but uh, i think i mentioned at the beginning charities for kind of fundraising sites and and it can be for whatever you want really to, to integrate to iplicit if you pose us the kind of question or, or let us know exactly what you're looking to integrate and what the integration touch points are, we can certainly look at the possibilities. But suppose the main thing to take from, from the webinar this afternoon and, and is, is knowing that there are certainly possibilities because of the open API that iPlicit has, because of the likes of tools like Syncly, 
there is definitely tools that all I was to integrate. I plus it with third party um, solutions. So it may be an e-commerce site, it may be a CRM site, maybe a stock system, an order management system. Um, we've integrated with loads over the piece, and that's not just from I plus it. That's from our experience of of implementing integration solutions for the last kind of fifteen years. Um, so our team's really well versed in integration. So out with actually putting in the your P system, like I plus it integration has been something that we've been involved with for a number of years um, going from just CSVs through to um, API connections that, that the likes of Bisyncly uses. So uh, quite a long-winded answer there, um, but really it, the floor is open to any, we're, we're open to looking at any kind of integration um, with Iplicit and looking at the different touch points that they have. Okay, great. Uh, that's all the questions at the minute. We've got a bit of time if anyone's got any sort of last minute ones they want to fire in. Yes, yeah, certainly. If there's any questions at all, please fire them in. We'll, we'll stay here for a few minutes if there are any questions. I've got my contact details there on the screen. So if you do want to get any more information about a classics, I know it was quite a short demonstration. Certainly lots of different areas that we can we can look to discuss further. Um, integration being one of them, VT return being one of them, which we've had questions on today. So if you do have any questions at all that you would like to raise with myself and the wider team here at Eureka Solutions, we'd be more than happy to answer any questions and set up any follow-up demonstration sessions um, and give you all the information that you need. But I hope today has been a, a, a good start of our 10 in terms of looking at potentially moving away from on-premise solutions to a system like iPlicit and that it's giving you a bit more information and a bit more food for thought in terms of what iPlicit can be doing going forward. 